In this example, we're asked to determine whether a collection of polynomials is a linearly dependent or linearly independent set. So here we're considering this collection of polynomials as a subset of P2, which is the uh, collection of all polynomials degree 2 and lower. Um, okay, so again, to determine whether a collection of vectors is linearly independent, what we really need to determine is whether this equation, c1 times vector 1, c2 times vector 2, uh, plus c3 times vector 3, is equal to the zero vector, whether that has a non-trivial solution. So it's linearly independent if the only way that uh, this sum is equal to zero is if all those scalars are zero. And it's linearly dependent if there's some non-trivial solution, some uh, non-zero solution for the C1, C2, C3. So uh, let's see, if we set up this equation, we have C1 times the first polynomial, x squared minus x plus 3, plus C2 times the second polynomial, 2x squared plus 3x minus 1, uh, plus C3 times the third polynomial, negative 5x plus 7, is equal to the zero vector. which the zero vector in this case, um, considering the set of all uh, polynomials, would just be the constant zero. It'd be a polynomial that has uh, zero x squared, zero x, and zero for the, the constant term. Okay, so now if we distribute the, the scalars there, we have c1 times x squared minus c1 times x, and c1 times 3, uh, plus 2 times c2 x squared, 3 c2 x, and negative 1 times c2, uh, minus 5 times c3 x, plus 7 times c3, is equal to zero. There we go, should have done that a while ago. Okay, um, so what we can do now to, to solve this is to collect the powers of x. So if we focus first on the squared terms, we have c1x squared, 2c2x squared, and those are all the squared terms I see. So uh, we could write that as x squared times c1 plus 2c2. Okay, so we're combining like terms here. Now if we focus on the x terms, we have negative c1x plus 3c2x and then this minus 5c3. So when we collect the x terms, so I'm writing plus x here, there it goes, uh, I have negative c1 times x, so there's our first coefficient, and then plus 3c2, I know that, that 2 on the c2 doesn't look real clear in, in black there, but uh, minus 5c3. All right, and then the constant terms, we have 3c1, minus c2, 7c3. So plus 3c1, uh, minus c2 plus 7c3 is equal to 0. Now for that to be equal to 0, uh, well first of all the squared term, the coefficient of x squared would have to be 0. Also the coefficient of x would have to be 0 and the constant term would have to be 0. So that's going to give us three separate equations. We have c1 plus 2c2, the coefficient of x squared must be 0. Also the coefficient of x must be 0, so negative c1 plus 3c2 
minus 5c3 must be 0. And uh, lastly, the, the constant term must be 0. So 3c1 minus c2 plus 7c3 must be 0. Um, in the last example, I solved using substitution. So using um, an algebra technique that you've learned uh, a while ago in, before this course. Uh, with this one, this is a more manageable matrix. Uh, so I would probably use a matrix in row reduce to solve this system. So you could solve this system using an augmented matrix uh, with the first row corresponding to that equation in blue. So 1, 2, 0, 0 here. Second row corresponding to that equation in red. And the last row corresponding to the equation in black there. Now I've gone through step by step in the row reduction in the printed notes. So you can view that if you would like. But to keep this video a bit shorter, I'm going to do the row reduction. Um, when you do several steps here, you get to this matrix, 1, 2, 0, 0, first row, we don't really have to mess with, uh, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, and then a row of zeros here. So based on this, um, getting to this form here, we see that uh, C3 is going to be a free variable. There's no pivot in the third column. Uh, so C3 is a free variable. Well, we had a theorem uh, several sections ago that said that any time you're solving a homogeneous system and you have a free variable, there are non-trivial solutions. So the free variable here indicates non-trivial solutions, even though we haven't done much to specify them. We know they're there. And so the uh, collection of vectors must be linearly dependent. Any time the, uh, that original system of equations this system of equations, or any time that this uh, this equation has non-trivial solutions, then the collection of vectors is linearly dependent. And that's what we have here based on this row reduction.